Mega Maniacs, welcome back to the PC Engine Files. I'm your host, Mr. Mega Man Fan, and in honor of the late Sid Mead, who passed away at the end of 2019, we are looking at Sid Mead's terraforming today. This one is definitely obscure, but those who do know about it probably wish that they didn't, and not because it's not a good game, and not because Sid Mead wasn't an amazing designer of futuristic looking objects and art styles and technology. What I associate most with him is the visuals from things like Blade Runner and Aliens, any of the crazy mechanical machines that you would see in those movies were drawn up or designed by him. And I suspect when they call this Sid Mead's terraforming, it means that he did the art for it, but we'll get into that in just a minute because I don't think of Sid Mead as a game designer as such, and I doubt he actually programmed it. Anyway, the reason I say those who do know about this obscure game probably wish they didn't is because -wee. if you're trying to complete a PC Engine or a Turbo Graphics collection, and this one is on your list. Yeah, yeah, you're either somebody who makes a six figure and up salary a year, or you won the lottery. Loose. This game goes for six hundred dollars. Complete nine hundred. New almost two grand. And I don't even think a copy of this has sold online in the last two years, three years been a while since one's actually gone up for sale this was at the tail end of the life cycle of the turbo graphics in the united states around the time they were reformatted as tti they were mostly focusing on the turbo duo and releasing games in cd format because they were cheaper to produce and manufacture but there was also limited demand for them there weren't that many turbo duo owners so not many of them were printed and what's left of them now is in high demand from people who are trying to complete a set as you can tell from the prices here so rather than focus on that aspect of things why don't we talk more about this very unique game which honestly deserves to be more than just expensive as hell and obscure to all but hardcore collectors of the console. From Giant Bomb, Sid Mead's Terraforming is a side-scrolling shoot 'em up Yeah, I think that's pretty obvious from my gameplay here. It was published in Japan by Naxit Soft and then the US by Turbo Technologies Incorporated, as I said, TTI. The American concept artist Sid Mead, best known for futuristic science fiction designs and contributions to movies such as Blade Runner and Aliens, well, did I nail that one on the head or what, was brought on to develop some of the game's artwork, including the player's ship. So yes, Sid Mead here is being credited for artwork and design, not for programming. Not saying that it's beyond the realm of possibility that a brilliant designer such as Sid Mead couldn't have taught himself programming and created a game from scratch, but no, he did not do that here. Terraforming uses a familiar power-up system that either replaces the current sub-weapon or upgrades the one the player is already using if it is of the same color. The player's main cannon upgrades independently while the sub-weapon switches between powerful but limited lasers electricity shots that have a small amount of homing power, and a spread shot that covers more of the screen. Yep, that's about the sum of it. I think my gameplay footage pretty much backs that up, and we are at the first boss fight here, and I just got killed. But, I'm right back in the thick of things. I've got a small number of power-ups. Not plentiful, but enough to, I think, get the job done. This thing I'm fighting looks like some kind of flying biomechanical space turtle. 
It's actually got kind of a Godzilla Gojira series feel to it. Like one of those fantastical beasts larger than life. Sort of looks like a familiar monster that we would know, but grown to enormous size. Although I don't actually know the scale of the ship involved here and the creature that we're fighting, so it's hard to say with relative accuracy. Let's see what somebody else has to say about terraforming. Let's try the PC Engine Software Bible, which I like to reference for a lot of these PC Engine Files videos. Oh, their description is much less robust than the one at Giant Bob. Overview. A biological themed shoot 'em up featuring designs from the renowned Sid Mead. Well, they got that part right. Who worked on the movies Blade Runner, Aliens, and Tron. Yeah, I'm glad they mentioned Tron, and I should have at the beginning. This Tron was absolutely my favorite movie as a kid. Have any of you ever heard of the... They're not laser discs, but they're like... I guess the best way to describe them is they're like vinyl records that have video on them. This is an actual technology. You can watch Tech Moan, T-E-C-H-M-O-A-N, and he's done videos about it. I believe they're called CEDs, and they actually came in a caddy, and you had to load the caddy into the player, and it would pull the disc in, and then you'd have to flip it over to the B side. You'd have to, you'd like, you'd have to put the caddy back in, pull the disc out, flip it to the B side, and load the caddy back in again. It was really cumbersome, but as funny as it is, my library actually had one of these when I was growing up. Maybe they got a grant from the state to purchase new technology, and you could actually check it out. And they had a small library of movies that you could check out with it as well. You could take them home and watch. And when they got Tron, Boy, did I go to town on that one. I checked out that thing. I brought it home. We hooked it up to the TV in the living room. I must have watched Tron like 10 times in a row. If it's not my all-time favorite movie, it's easily top five. So the fact that Sid Mead had anything to do with the design or artwork of Tron speaks volumes to why I consider him such an amazing designer and why it's such a huge loss and it was so obscured coming right at the end of 2019 with everybody's focus on so many other things that it was almost a blip on the radar at the time and I hope as more time passes more people will talk about just how influential Sid Mead really was when it come when it comes to his vision of the future and how it shaped what we thought of as the future when I was growing up and how it still shapes the designs that other people make in science fiction even to this day. It's a shame that his name is attached to a game that came out at the tail end of a failing console which was never going to have a chance in the market against Sega and Nintendo and... Even to a lesser degree, Atari, they were always going to run third or fourth in this market, no matter who they were competing against. They just didn't have that kind of clout that they had in Japan, where the PC Engine was a huge hit. So, just out of curiosity, I decided to put it on this truth difficulty mode. I'm amused that that's like the hardest difficulty setting is truth. And the truth is... Wow, it seems like they are really trying to fill up the enemy just level to the point where you almost can't handle the number of things on the screen at once, even with the powerful weapons that you have. Not that I'm noticing any kind of slowdown because the Turbo Graphics slash Turbo Duo, PC Engine, PC Engine Duo, whatever you want to call it. Okay, it was... How do I put it? It, it was... Not as advanced as 
the 32-bit systems that came after Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis, but it was more advanced in some ways than the 16-bit systems that it was contemporary to in terms of its ability to handle multiple sprites on the screen at one time. Even though there's a lot of contentious debate about whether it's really an 8-bit or a 16-bit system, I think once you get into, like, super CD games like Rondo of Blood and Sid Mead's Terraforming, I don't think at that point you can really argue that it's not, like, operating at a 16-bit level, even if there's 8-bit architecture in the original PC Engine. And the funny thing is, they tried to release a fully next-generation 16-bit PC Engine they made a system called the Super Graphics, and then they only made six titles for it because the PC Engine was so well established in Japan that nobody wanted to pay lots of extra money to buy a Super Graphics with only six exclusive games for it. So it actually flopped, and the PC Engine continued to be huge there for many years to follow. It's a very interesting little quirky piece of trivia in the history of that console, but that is Sid Mead's Terraforming. A very unique game, a very overlooked game, and one that I hope you've enjoyed learning more about on my video today. Thanks for watching.